Now we're going to continue our discussion of Big O. And I should start off by telling you that Big O uh, is sometimes written like this and sometimes written like this. There may be other ways it's written. It, it all pretty much just means the same thing. And uh, if you look at my board over there, you can see that there's a bunch of functions that I have written. And uh, the last time we were together, uh, we had said that we were going to draw a line somewhere in here between the polynomial and the non-polynomial functions. Who remembers, like, where do we draw the line between good and bad or fast and slow? Mr. Frenemick? Okay, so we were saying, no. No, no, no. Mr. Schulson. Okay, so here somewhere, and I don't mean to imply by this list that this is a comprehensive list because it's also like end of the fourth and end of the fifth and end of the 23rd. I just haven't written all those out. Um, so here we draw the line and we say anything above this is going to be considered polynomial. And over here everything is going to be non-polynomial. And we said that these are troublemakers because they tend to grow rather fast. Now I was watching some of these videos on Big O on YouTube getting ready for it. And I, I saw one uh, individual, uh, I think I mentioned to you that technically speaking in math, logarithms are not polynomials. Can someone tell me why a logarithm function, let's take a simple one like this. Why is that not a polynomial? Yes, Miss Mila. So polynomials have to be defined over a certain domain. Does anybody know what domain all polynomials? Yes, sir, Mr. That's right. They have to be defined over the set of all real numbers. It, it, is that the domain of that function? What's missing, Mr. F? Sorry. Can't be, <clears throat> can't be negative. Also can't be zero. So you can see that this is not going to fit the definition of a polynomial. Yes, sir. I think it goes like that. So, okay. So uh, now, so technically speaking, th these are not polynomials, but I had said that Loosely speaking, we, we kind of, as computer scientists, lump them into the polynomial camp uh, for convenience. Uh, I did see one individual who was uh, discussing this, uh, this as non-polynomial, and described this group not just as polynomial, but as log or polynomial, which I thought was clever. And I think I may just use that going forward. So I'm going to say log or polynomial for this group here, just so that I don't violate the math wording. And then here we'll still say this is like non-polynomial. All right, uh, so now let's go back here and uh, let's talk a little bit about what we mean by big O as it relates to computer science. So we're going to use these categories, these general categories to categorize our, our algorithms in computer science. And let's say, for example, uh, that we have some process, some computer process that depends directly on n. So we'll say that we have some function uh, f of n that basically determines how long it takes for some algorithm to run. Instead of using f here, we're going to start using this uh, nomenclature like this. We're going to say we're going to call that big O and we're going to say that the process depends on n. Now I need to explain to you some properties of this big O, uh, and some of them I think will make more sense to you if you think about it in terms of the other thing in mathematics that we said that was heavily related to this. What was that? Do you remember? End behavior, so sort of like that. So we said that in end behavior, the end behavior of a function is dependent on the dominant term, and we said we tend to ignore the other terms. And there's going to be a similar type of thing that's done here for big O. So I want you to imagine that we have two processes. We have two processes. And one of them takes, um, it takes, uh, it's, it's directly dependent on how many data points you have, n. And the other process, I'll call it g, uh, it takes n processes, but also takes an additional, for the purposes of our discussion, we'll say it takes an additional three hours. So this one depends on n, and this one depends on n plus 3 hours. This one is not as good as this one. This one, you agree, I think, always runs faster than that one, yes? So now my next question to you is, 
if we were doing n behavior, how would we describe the n behavior of this function versus this function? What, what would we say would be similar or different? What do you think? They're the same because we would pretty much ignore this term here for the purposes of n behavior. Is that right? So we're going to do a similar thing in our big O analysis, and we're going to say that these two functions are both big O of n. So we're going to ignore any constants that sort of happen here. Now try to understand that does not mean that the two functions take the same amount of time to run. We just said that this one is always faster than that one. But in terms of categories of speed, categories of speed, they fall into the same category. Likewise, we're going to say that if we have a function like this, we're going to say that the 3 is not really of interest to us. We're going to say, we're going to simplify this to bring the 3 to the outside like this. And then we're going to basically ignore the 3. And so this is going to basically turn into O of n again like that. So we're going to ignore the constants. We're going to ignore the constants. Now, this, I'm guessing, is pretty OK with you and no big deal, yes, sir. So I'm glad you brought that up, sir. O of k, uh, does it matter what the constant is? Like if I had O of 300 and the other one was like O of 3 million, does that matter to us? No, it, it's all the same category. And for that reason, sir, I'm glad you brought this up, a lot of times this O of k is often written O of 1. Okay, these two mean the same thing. Sometimes. The authors write it like this, sometimes they write it like that. It, yes, that's right. So to repeat, as n gets larger, you can see this function is not dependent on n. And so it just it doesn't make a difference for us. In terms of categorization, in terms of categorization, it's in the same category. That's, try to think of big O as categories of functions. It's not measuring the exact amount of time it takes for a function to run. It's not doing that. We're trying to put stuff in categories, and then we can say, OK, this one is in a higher category than that one, because this one uh, increases at a faster rate. That's what we're trying to do. Okay? So therefore, with that idea in mind, let's say that I had this, and I wanted you to simplify that into another big O expression. What would be the big O expression that would be the simplified version of that one? Please discuss with your partner for just. Okay, Mr. Mulcahy, sir, what do you think here? I want to simplify this into a, a simpler big O expression. What do you think about that? That's right. So this just becomes O of n squared like that. This business about ignoring the terms and ignoring the constants seems pretty easy to you until I tell you that O of log base 10n can be simplified to be O of log base 2n. And that, I'm guessing, doesn't sit well as well with you. And now we have to figure out why would these two be the same. In fact, not only are they the same, but no matter what base this number is, we can generically write this like this. And here, unlike in mathematics, where this would be what logarithm? What base would this logarithm be? 10. ten. In computer science, this isn't log base 10. This is every log base. Every log base. In fact, this is a generic log. Any idea why these two? would be the same. So you can change the base on a logarithm using the change of base rule. And the only thing that's changing are the constants. And so that's why you can go from one log to another log. If you don't want to worry about it, you don't have to. The only thing you want to keep in mind is that when we write logarithm functions in big O notation, we don't use a base because we don't care about the base. Okay? We just write it generically with the word log. And it can mean any base you want. And we try to figure out what is the big O of the algorithm. I'm going to use for loops now in my code. And you want you to see, now if I go like this, for i equals 0, i is less than 100,000 plus plus i. And then there's some stuff here. What do you think would be the big O of this function here. Mr. F, sorry. Yes, sir. This is O of K. 
you'll notice that if the amount of data that we have in the system goes from one piece to a million pieces, this code doesn't really change the amount of time it takes to run. Don't let that big number confuse you. That doesn't matter. That could just as easily have been 10, and this is still a constant amount of time that it takes to run. If the array is of fixed size, then no. If the, array if the size of the array depends on how many data points you have in your model, then it would become O of n. So let's look over here now, and let's say <clears throat> that I was to put in here some capital N, which shows the number of data points I have. Now it's not O of k anymore. What is it? Now it goes to being O of n, or n, whatever, capital, small, or whatever one they use there. You see the difference, right? OK, now let's look at another example. Let's say I have a for loop. Uh, I'm going to just abbreviate it like that. This basically means it runs n times, OK? That's just pseudocode. And then let's say that I have another one down here. And what I want to know is how long will it take this program to run in terms of O, big O. Sir, these loops are not inside one another. They're running in series. Uh, Mr. Moises, sir, how long will it take for the two loops to run? That's going to be the final answer. Uh, it is going to be O of n. But before we get that, what would be sort of the intermediate answer? This takes O of n, this takes O of n, therefore it should be what? Yes, sir? n plus n. OK, then we're going to simplify this to O of 2n. And then we're going to simplify that to, we're going to pull the 2 outside because it's a constant. So you can see that O of n. Now, this is where students sometimes start to get a little uncomfortable because I, I literally have a, a process that takes twice as long as some other process that might only be dependent on one n. And you're telling me they go in the same category. Well, yeah, those are the way the categories are defined. OK, so we're going to basically take this process that takes twice as long as this one, in theory, but they go in the same category. Because the twice thing, once again, is a constant. We just don't care about that. So this plus this is still going to bring us back to this. Now let's look at another situation where we have a for loop here, but this time the other for loop is inside the other for loop. So they're, the, the loops are nested. They're nested inside one another. So what I want to know, Ms. Teleska, how long would this process take in terms of O of, o of, o of something? This would become an n square algorithm. So now, if I have an algorithm like this, it goes 4n, and then there's another 4n, and then there's another 4n, and then this one has a nested 4n, and then this one has another nested 4n. What would the original look like, and then what would the simpl simplified version look like? Yes, sir, Mr. Mariak. It would be O of n cubed plus n plus n. So this part here would be the n cubed part. This part would be this n. This part would be this n. And then when we simplify this, Mr. Mariak, what would we get? That's right. You can see that this is going to be the dominant term. 